Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Hannah Season 1, Episode 2, Friend. So I decided to review this episode before I do the rundown review, only because this episode is very interesting and fascinating. It explores more of Hannah learning about humanity, and um, it's just like when you watch it, it, it feels completely different from that of the first episode. So it makes you wonder, okay, what kind of show am I watching? So, you know, it's a coming of age type story for Hannah with the spy stuff in between. And it also correlates to that of the movie, which one day I say I will get into when I do the rundown review. So this episode starts off very oddly. It's a girl on one of those, like, um, she's on social media. And she did like one of those little filter things because she's on a cam and she has like a dog face and everything. And I'm just thinking to myself, um, is this the same show I watched <laughs> when I watched the first episode? Now this girl is Sophie. Sophie is a British teenager um, of Indian descent, Muslim, um, probably Pakistan. If she's in England, um, the chances are she's Pakistanian probably. Because a lot of Pakistanians live in... Um, Europe and England and stuff. So I'm, I'm just going to assume she's Pakistanian. Um, and one thing we learn about her, is she's a very lazy, very spoiled, very um, teen. <laughs> Basically, she's your, your, your typical teenage girl. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't care about nothing but herself. Um, she's very flirtatious. She loves to party. She loves to drink. Um, she's a wild child, basically. So... We hear a, a horn honking and, and somebody yelling at her. It's her mom telling her to hurry up and get in this car. So she's a very lazy person who would rather be on face chat than to hop in the car and go on her family vacation. So her family goes on vacation and when they're there, they're at like a beach. One thing I will say that's a problem with this show, no matter what season it is, is like how they get from one country to another in the blink of an eye and stuff. And it'll be nice if they put like the name of the country they're in because I'm thinking myself when I saw them on the beach, I saw camels and everything. I'm just like, well, that's kind of like, where are they? <laughs> and then so um, later on, I found out where they are when they started walking through like a market town and everything. And so like. Hannah is now um, captured by like Marissa's people and she's taken over there to the country that Sophie is like vacationing on. See, Sophie's parents are going through a rough patch and they thought maybe having a nice family vacation would help and stuff, right? And so like one thing I forgot to mention in the last review um, is that like Hannah and Eric, they was running from like the guards, right? And they take one down and they decide they're gonna split up. So they're gonna meet in Berlin, which is where he's from. And I, and so what is it? Um, He tells her all this stuff to say in case she gets captured. Like her dad works at a certain company. They are um, from Amsterdam. Um, their dog poops on the carpet, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm not joking. <laughs> they literally said the dog poops on the carpet. That's supposed to be like a cover and everything. And so they'll split up um, to communicate, do by postcard, and they'll meet up, um, you know, eventually. So as they're running, Marissa's like guards are about to shoot Eric, and Hannah can hear it over the intercom or the walkie talkie thing, but she can't get to him in time. So she pretends to like give up and tell about she needs help on the intercom. So they leave a walkie talkie. <laughs> so they leave him alone and they go after her. And she tells him, he abandoned me because I was too slow and all this other stuff. And Marissa is just looking on the camera and she's just like staring uh, intensely trying to read like Hannah's like facial expressions and stuff. So Hannah's in this place and as she's eating, they're like interrogating her asking like, you know, what's all she's been doing? What's all been going on with her and Eric and all this other stuff. Now, Eric told her plain and simple, you can't trust Mar uh, Marissa. She lies and everything. And so, like, Hannah, she's all like, you know, she wants to see Marissa and everything. 
And so Marissa, she's nobody's fool. <laughs> she's watching everything on a monitor and watching very closely. And she sends in a decoy and everything. And so the decoy comes in and is talking about like, just being all nice, talking about you're safe now, you have nothing to worry about, blah, blah, stuff like that. And Hannah, as she's giving, she just all of a sudden just gives the woman like a big hug and everything. And so the real Marissa is just like staring her down. And she, and then we can see Hannah pulls something from her. Um, it's like a, a long object, object that I guess she stole when she was um, in the facility. Cause you know, they made her strip down and they made her like take a shower and everything. I gotta say, what's really interesting, remember how I said she lived in like the, the forest and lived in the cave and all this and she don't know like nothing is? When she had a shower for the first time, she, she her reaction was just like uncanny. Like she she was just like fidgeting and putting her head down and, and all this other stuff. It's like she has no idea what none of this stuff is like. And so like that's one reason why I decided to review this episode if I go down the rundown thing. Because like when she does explore humanity in this episode, it's so bizarre. It's like taking a person out of the 800s um, and putting them in the 21st century. Like they just have no clue what's going on and stuff. And so like, when I said 800s, not 1800s. So this is back like way <laughs> back, 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 you know what I'm saying? And so, um, so like she takes the object and she stabs the fake um, Marissa and everything and she kills her. So then the red, alar um, red alarm happens and Hannah's just whooping butt left and right. Now one guard is able to get the upper hand on her, but not for too long. And I'm saying, these are these 200 pound men and, uh, men, about 150 pound women guards, and they cannot take down a 90 pound 15 year old girl. She is just whooping them left and right. So then she takes the weapons and of course she's blowing the brains out and stuff. Cause that's how she was like trained. Now there is a scene very similar to this in the movie because the movie follows the first and second episode very closely. And the ending to the movie is very much differently from the show. And there's some differences here and there, right? Um, and I've watched the, um, never watched the movie, but I watched the clip of the escape scene from the movie. It's not as fascinating as it is in a TV show. Like the movie had had like half of it was like probably like a six out of ten um, rating system and stuff. So you know it had some pretty good reviews and everything, but it wasn't enough to garner like a sequel. And because uh, the movie came out in 2019, and the show came out actually around that time. Or maybe I'm getting that year messed up. I gotta look again. Yeah, when I do the rundown review, I'll know exactly what year the movie came out. But I'm pretty sure it came out around 2000 and something or another anyway so like as she's making her escape she's just like killing people left and right she's killing scientists she's killing the guards if a guard puts their hand up in the air like a, well these guards are soldiers actually when they put their hands up in the air she'll let them live and so they run out screaming and stuff and so she knocks out one of um, the military guards and she puts on their uniform and she just strolls on out the facility <laughs> like you know she's like one of them and stuff so she makes it out to the desert because they're i think they're in pakistan i think so she makes it out in the desert and she takes off the uniform stuff for the pants because you know you can't walk around just a shirt and pants and she takes like the book bag that she stole and the gun and so she's looking for a way out of there so during this time Sophie is being like a butthead to her family. She's hollering, she's screaming, talking about she don't want in this family no more. And she just takes off walking, right? And like, they all like, where are you going? And she's like, home. <laughs> I don't know how she's gonna get home because she's a long way from um, Britain and everything. So like, she's just like walking out in the desert. And of course she gets lost. And you know, it's hot out there and she meets Hannah. And then, so she asks for help for Hannah and, and like Hannah gives her some water to drink and Hannah tells her straight up, don't drink it all. But then here comes Sophie drinking it all and Hannah just snatches it from her. And so like, 
when they see Sophie's parents, they flag them down and they decide to give Hannah a ride back. So, of course, the parents are interrogating the crap out of um, Hannah, asking, like, who are you? You're just like a little girl and stuff. And she's all like, I'm here on vacation. They're like, alone? She's like, yes. They're like, where's your dad? In Amsterdam. And she repeats everything that he tells her where he lives at, um, the fake place in Amsterdam where he works at, how the dog poops on the carpet everything like and she does it in a very robotic kind of way and not in a very organic kind of way she's basically just like reciting everything off like a, a sheet of paper that's how it feels like and um they ask her how school and everything well no no, no. they they ask her like um what school she goes to and she tells them then they ask what year are you and she just freezes because she was never told what year she's in and stuff and so then sophie's all like school sucks and then Hannah like adapts and she's all like, yeah, school sucks and everything. Uh, and, crap. and she's playing a video game for the first time and she's beating Sophie's brother's like high score, like really good. Like she's really good at doing that, which is weird because she's never played a video game before, but she catches on very fast and learns to adapt and everything, which probably explains why season two feels the way it did and stuff because she's adapted so quickly in season one. So they go back on the cruise ship, um, cause they, 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 they brought their car with them on vacation. And so they go on like the cruise ship and, um, but before they get on the cruise ship, right? They're walking around the, the market. This is how I knew they was in some type of like Indian type country, but I think they're in Pakistan. And so Hannah's just like amazed by like, what all she sees and all the people she's never been around this many people at one time and you know those marketplaces on the street they're packed with the people it's basically like going to walmart on uh, stuff like that and it's just she's just so shocked and like amazed and everything and then um sophie's parents they're eating at some place high above like some type of like bistro type of like place and she's still irritated with her family they just can't get along and the dad's tired of his daughter acting like a brat. The mom just wants them to be happy. And then as they're like about to leave and go on the cruise ship, Sophie spots Hannah down in the marketplace. So she goes down there and as they're in the car, we just see um, everybody in the car, except for Hannah, but <laughs> Hannah is hiding in the car. Sophie put it there before they all, um, you know, drove off and her hair is shown. So Sophie kind of like, you know, covers up her hair and stuff. So, like, once the car docks on the cruise ship and everything, the family leaves, Hannah splits and she just goes a separate way. But then Sophie is able to track her down when she sees her in the gift shop trying on sunglasses. And so, like, Sophie is, like, talking to her. And one of the interesting thing about Sophie is that every time she's around um, Hannah, like, even before when the family gave her, like, a ride in the desert, Sophie is very close to Hannah, which really threw me off because when we first see um, Sophie on vacation, she's making out with the guy. And then so like when we see her with Hannah, every time she looks at Hannah, she looks at Hannah with like a gaze, a loving gaze. And she's always putting her head on her shoulder or nuzzles with her or cuddles with her and stuff. And then she just straight up holds her hand. So I'm just like, okay. Maybe she's like bi or maybe she's into Hannah, right? And so like, it really confused me because throughout this whole episode, she's just like acting like she's in love with Hannah at first sight. But then we always see her making out with guys and stuff. And then we later on find out in the season, she has a boyfriend and stuff who she cheats on. Um, yeah, I will get into more than that <laughs> when um, the season um, rundown review. But like, needless to say, I was just so confused about her and her sexuality in this episode. And when I get down to the rundown review, like I remember just thinking of myself being very shocked and still very, very confused. I'm just like, I don't understand what they're going with on this. Because um and, and like I remember I talked to a friend of mine from college, um, 
And I'm all like, is it just me or did Sophie seem like she was totally into Hannah, but nothing ever happened between those two? He's like, yeah, he, he got that same feeling. He was confused. And, <laughs> and like, so and then I was like reading the comment sections um, uh, about this show. And somebody asked that same question and more people were confused. And then, of course, OK. And so then um, it's revealed in the movie from what I read that they share a kiss in the movie. So I'm like, oh, uh, OK, that's what they were alluding to in the show. But then I'm all like, why didn't they just like go there in like the show? I mean, if they did it in the movie, who cares about the show? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so as they're in the gift shop, this is when you really start to see a little bit more Hannah starting to like become human and everything for the first time. She has these big sunglasses on and she just loves the way she looks in them because they're goofy looking. And um, she doesn't really understand. She kind of thinks things are free in there. Like she sees a box of Snickers, which she goes crazy for because she loves Snickers now. And she assumes that they're all free once you buy like one of them and the whole box. And Sophie's like, no, you still got to pay for that. Like, that is not free <laughs> and stuff. And so like when she's there, like trying on like the sunglasses, she literally asks, is this me? <laughs> and everything and stuff like that, like in a very cutesy kind of way. Like she's having fun for the first time. And... Sophie tells her, like, you know, you need some new clothes other than them combat pants and, like, that shirt and stuff. And so she's all like, we need, I need to dress you. Um, you need to, like, dress your figure or something like that, she said. But she uses the word figure. And then so when we see Hannah again, she's wearing new clothes. It's Sophie clothes. She's like her bar and stuff. And she meets up with the family again and they're all like hannah what are you doing here and stuff she's all like we're giving hannah a ride back to like i guess like i don't know back to like um the airport so she can like get back to um amsterdam and stuff like that and so that makes the parents more weary and question what is going on with hannah and then hannah says the funniest thing she's all like i dress my figure <laughs> <laughs> and stuff <laughs> and so like the parents are still asking her tons of questions but sophie doesn't want them to ask her any questions because they assume she's a runaway and i remember sophie first assumed that she might be in sex, tra um, sex trafficking and stuff like that but you know they know something's up with her but they think they think she's just kind of like probably run away from home or on a vacation by herself but they are again very questionable and stuff like that so like she convinces her parents to like stay in a hotel once they're um god where were they and i don't know they bounce around from country to country and stuff and they don't ever let you know what country they're in and so like they're in another country i want to say france but i don't know is that it might be france i think um and yeah, so like this country, this show, this show is filmed in other countries when they do like on location things sometimes, but they do cast people from like America, Britain, Canada, because there's a lot of historical looking buildings that you see and stuff. And so like, while in the hotel, Hannah's watching TV for the first time, you know what I'm saying? And so Sophie being bored, she wants to party. So she dolls up like Hannah, Hannah's wearing like makeup for the first time. And they go out to like a club. Um, first, let me um, pause and let me talk about something else. So Marissa, she has enlisted the help of one of her like friends from back in like the spy days and everything. He's kind of like this seedy little guy. He doesn't dress like um, he's military, but you can tell he's in the spy game. And they're in like a male strip club, which I've never seen before. I didn't even know men's legs can like do that. <laughs> like I've seen women strippers do that on the pole, but I've never seen a man <laughs> do that. And so she recruits him and I forget his name. Um, in the movie it's called Isaac, but I think in the show it's something else. And so he's been tasked to find like Hannah and stuff. So at the club and everything, Hannah is just like walking around and she is it's kind of one of those like rave type clubs so there's like neon lights everywhere and there's a bunch of teenagers and stuff and so 
she's just like looking around like she's just in such awe you know and so she's hanging with sophie and sophie um got her like a drink and hannah's all like i can't drink that that's alcohol and she's all like well, why not she's all like because my dad said it dulls your senses and reaction time and then sophie tells her are you always gonna listen to your father so sophie is bringing out more of the rebellious side and hannah that's gonna cause some problems between her and eric laid on down the road um she's influenced her both in a good and bad kind of way but because of this hannah is starting to like you know become human for the first time and act her like age and stuff like you no longer like you still need to look at her as a five-year-old kid even though she's 15 um but as this episode progresses then you need to start looking at her as a 15 year old and stuff and so like she drinks it and then all of a sudden she says something like um she, she keeps drinking more to where she starts to get buzzed and she says she can't smell or feel something in her body and she's all and, and sophie's all that's how you know it works <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden when she sees everybody dancing never she never danced before in her life and all of a sudden she's just like trying to imitate everybody else by putting her hair down shake her head bounce up and down and you know like and since sophie did her hair her hair doesn't look like a wild child no more and because she's look like a cave girl <laughs> and everything and you know she's dancing man like you know what i'm saying and it's just like a unique experience to watch her do this because because you gotta remember she was basically like a little cave girl mountain girl and stuff and so like then she um sees that these guys are staring at her and sophie well you know sophie likes that so next thing you see them all making out with the guy so sophie has her guy and then hannah has her guy and at this time we don't know sophie has a boyfriend just yet um so it's kind of interesting when something happens and it's like because sophie's bad man she cheats constantly on her boyfriend and she, she basically just kisses any like guy she sees and stuff and so because she's rebelling hard against her family and so like hannah is very odd when she kisses because i don't think she had a chance to kiss that one dude um back where she was on um, and on um, where she was at and stuff and so like it's interesting because like she's just stiff like sitting there looking like a blank like stare and her lips are not moving and the guy's just like kissing all over her lips and the dude's just kind of like what the world is going on and he's all like well at least open your mouth <laughs> and everything and when she opens her mouth she opens it wide like she's at the dentist so he's still going at it like, <laughs> put his like tongue all in her mouth <laughs> it's so awkward to watch and then he goes and i think he puts his hand on her butt or hip or maybe her boob or something like that and she snatches his hand away because she doesn't want him to do that. But then she's kind of like in her head. She's like, crap, I need to blend in. So then she puts his hand back on her and she's all like, I'm sorry. And then she keeps like, like kissing him and stuff like that. But then she decides she's going to take charge and she jumps him and everything. And so she straddles him and she's like just making all out with him. Like she's like grinding and stuff. Sophie sees this and is all like, oh no, we need to like cut this out. <laughs> Because she figures, you know, like, Hannah's going to go, like, all the way with this dude and stuff. Now let's get to some Eric and Marissa stuff. Because this gets very interesting. We get some nice little backstory. And we get to see just how capable this man is. So, like, he's... Uh, so Marissa, she goes to Berlin to talk to Eric's mother. And Eric's mother, like, I haven't talked to him in years and blah, blah, blah. And stuff like that. And so, like... Eric, he's in um, po um, Poland and stuff. And while he's there, he is now fully shaven. Like, he looks the way he did back in that flashback early in uh, the first episode. His hair is all cut and everything. And, like, the man doesn't change up his appearance. Like, his hair has been slicked back for the past, like, 20-something years. And so, like... He has to make it to Berlin and everything. That's where he has to meet Hannah. He does something I would never expect anybody to do. So, he goes to a fish market and he buys something. Like a pound of something. I didn't know what he had bought. And then we see him at night. 
he's by the dock and everything and we see him stripped down and he only has like a book bag and a bag or something and then he puts his clothes and book on his book bag and then he puts them in the bag and then he takes up the thing he bought from the fish market it's blubber and everything and so like he takes it and he just starts smearing it all over his body and everything so it's like really oily on him um and this thing you know he hops in the water and he swims and i'm thinking to myself dude where is he going at night because it's freezing cold at night but if he has the blubbery fat stuff on his body that will actually help keep him warm don't try this at home <laughs> this is a fictional show by the way but yeah it, blubber actually does um help you stay warm because i remember i was watching the magic school bus and they had an episode where they was out in the arctic and they were trying to stay warm and miss frizzle put like i think still blubbery fat on them and she's all like this help keeps in your heat and everything help keep the cold out and all this other stuff so that's how he swam and where did he go geez he went from poland to like um berlin and everything now the distance between those two aren't really that far but it's far if you swim <laughs> um driving it i forgot how many hours it is if you drive. i think it's like 300 miles or something like that if you drive so yeah and um so there's cameras everywhere and stuff of course and marissa's like spying here and there and she literally tells like the one dude like he swam from like poland to berlin and then also the dude um uh, from the strip club that she recruited he um has found out that hannah um has made her way onto like a cruise ship and he gets the license plate of like the, the family car and so he's hot on her trail right now so in a flashback we see what eric used to do for the cia he used to recruit pregnant women basically he will wait outside an abortion clinic and then when he from other countries and stuff and when he would see a woman about to go there he would charm them into not having an abortion and to give it up for like adoption and everything so then they would and then so and he will recruit them for marissa for the utrax thing and in the flashbacks like if you think marissa is evil now whoo wait till you see her in the flashbacks with that short hair she was very evil and she was very happy to um uh, get those pregnant women and stuff like that and of course one of them was hannah's mom and everything so, but then of course eric fall, fell in love with hannah's mom and then that's when they went on the escape and hannah's mom got killed and stuff and it's really interesting to see how evil Marissa is because that's the training that her father, the chairman, did in season three that we find out. And so it's interesting that, you know, after she learns the, the real truth, truth of the matter, then she turns, which is, this is completely different from the movie. This doesn't like, you know, her turning over a new leaf and everything does not happen in the movie. She's very much the villain in like the movie. And of course, the biggest revelation of them all is that Eric isn't even really Hannah's biological father because he met the mother while she was already pregnant and stuff and so like that's just like really fascinating because like and of course you know she, when she does eventually find out <laughs> she's gonna be pissed so when they was at the gift shop at the cruise thing hannah you know sent the postcard out to like eric and stuff like that right and so like now they're in like the airport and what is it um you know they have to say their goodbyes to like hannah and so um sophie's all like i want to walk um hannah inside to the terminal and everything so they're walking in there and they're saying their goodbyes and like I said before, they're constantly like holding each other, cradling each other. Um, they, oh, before when they was on the cruise ship, they was in like a photo booth taking all these silly pictures. And they kiss each other like on the cheek, but that's about as much kissing as they do, but they stick their tongues out and make both their tongues touch. I just don't understand why the movie, the TV show just didn't go there. I mean, the, the movie did, then why didn't like, you know, the TV show did. And so anyway, as they're saying their heartfelt goodbyes and Sophie's to the point of tears because she doesn't want to leave Hannah. Hannah now knows what it is to have a true friend and everything. 
But this is when the craziness happens. Hannah starts to look around and she starts to see certain huge tall men dressed in black are like just staring at her in different positions of the airport. She know, And then she sees this other man on top and he's waving at her. She knows she's been made and everything. So she pushes Sophie and tells her, go back to your family um, and, uh, and just like leave and everything. So she runs off and then Sophie follows her. And Sophie's like, what is wrong and everything? Why are you treating me like this? And she's all like, I don't want to be around you no more. It's too dangerous to be around me. Go where you'll be safe. But then the men surround both of the women. Boy, the action scene was interesting. So we see Hannah and a man behind her. It turns to Sophie. You start hearing a bunch of punching, but you don't see it. Then it turns back to Hannah. She is whooping these 200, close to 300 pound, huge muscular men at the airport. And she is whooping on them good <laughs> in her birthday. <laughs> and then so like she's just whooping on them and they're, they're on a high place, right? Um, where like the elevator goes up. And so one of them pulls a gun on Hannah and Hannah has one of the men. He's all like, you know, stop right now or like we'll shoot and everything. Hannah th doesn't care. She turns around with the man. And she just runs towards the balcony ever and they fall off the balcony and you hear people screaming a loud thug when we go down there to see her she's on top of the man he took the blunt of the fall so she's still trying to run up out of there but the man that um uh, what is it so then she takes like the gun and she starts just like firing in the air and it causes everybody to scatter and everything and then so next thing you know um one of the guards, after she's done whooping on him, she points the gun at him and she's getting ready to fire. And it's very close, her hand's on the trigger and she's gonna pull it. And then we hear Sophie yell at her, talking about, no, Hannah, don't kill this man and everything. And then Hannah just kind of like looks at Sophie, then looks at the man. And she kind of doesn't know really what to do at this point because her training tells her to kill these people. But she decides she's gonna listen to Sophie because Sophie's now her friend who has corrupted her, her training and everything. And so she lets the man live and tells him to leave. But then she whoops a thing on the contact and everything. And she hightails it out of there. And so she takes a train to Berlin and stuff. So at this point in time, um, the man who Marissa hired and stuff, he's interrogating the family, but the family, of course, doesn't know. They think Sophie knows something, but Sophie's playing kind of like dumb and doesn't want to say, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, they tell her, and the family asks, you know, what did Hannah do that was so bad? And he's all like, it's not Hannah, it's her father. And they show a picture of, like, a dead man and stuff. And they're like, oh my God, and stuff like that. Now, I don't think Eric killed this man, because I don't recall him killing nobody in this episode. I think when he meets um, Marissa, she tells him, you know, why did you kill that, like, um, security guard? And he's like, to blame Eric, something like that. So I think he killed them just to blame it on Eric and stuff. So now Eric is like a fugitive all on, like, the news and all this other stuff. When Hannah makes it to Berlin, she goes to the apartment where um, Eric is supposed to be. But he's not there. So she's just kind of, like, hungry and stuff. So she walks around and she sees, like... Uh, a dog he's in like a dark alley and he's kind of like sniffing around a pizza box so there's a piece of pizza in there that hasn't been eaten so she eats it and then she gives some to the dog but then this like little shady man walks up to her and he wants to know if she's selling and stuff and so she tries to run off but he um stops her with a knife and so she's about to fight him but then eric shows up and whoops this man butt <laughs> and stuff and then Hannah's pissed at Eric. She's all like, where were you? You wasn't in the apartment like you said you was going to be. And he's all like, I had to make sure you came alone and stuff like that. And so basically, you know, like it ends like there. And some more interesting stuff does happen in episode three. But that's when I will get into like the rundown review. But yeah, I just wanted to touch down on this episode first because it's very unique and interesting. And this is what caught, uh, caught me in the show. Like the first season, there isn't that much action, but it's just, it's the exploration of your own humanity that I found so intriguing from this little mountain cave girl and stuff, you know? Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.